I want to show you a really great exercise this week. You do need a lot of strength and balance to do this though. Burpee. My leg's already on fire and that burpee is actually tough on the leg as well. But the one leg squat gets it. Get the most bang for your buck and strengthen yourself in less time. Which is really what the Athletics is all about. If you watch my channel, Alec here should be a familiar face. He recently got a lot of attention after making a video titled, Why Athlean X is Not a Strength Coach. He's recently started a video series on athleticism where he just pokes fun at Athlean X. Well, take a look at this video. All that's really happening here is Jeff is presenting an option to increase the difficulty of a fairly straightforward core exercise. It's simple, it's not really for me, but it's not complicated. Now watch how our boy Harry magically transmogrifies this into something ridiculous. And the scientifically proven irradiation effect that comes about as a result of that glute and core activity causes a super intense biceps contraction that cannot possibly be achieved with normal curl variations. So we're building athleticism and crazy bicep strength and size. <laughs> Let me show you what we got here for you now. We got what I like to call the ultimate abs, oh, the ultimate biceps workout. And I got abs on my mind with zero mole curls. What I'm talking about with the zero mole curl is uh, the, uh, I put it around my body, a band, okay? And I'm telling you, you're going to be able to see muscle growth at a quicker rate. Does something ridiculous. Does something ridiculous. Does something ridiculous. Does something ridiculous. A variation on the first exercise. <coughs> We're going to take a dumbbell with one hand. Pull, again, one hand in a band up here. Hold one arm down. Again, if I were to let go, I swing back. I'm going to drop straight down. Up. Curl. Up. Does something Girl. ridiculous. Does something ridiculous. Does something ridiculous. Does something ridiculous. Functional training. I got a pet peeve about this. Functional training is not balancing on four balls on the ground and you know doing circus acts and trying to look like some something goofy when. That's not what it's about. What it's about is actually doing what we said, purposeful training. This is not like, wait, it's an 85 pound dumbbell. So you don't have to sacrifice your strength to be able to train functionally. I take it up. I bring up to the top. Now when I come down, this weight wants to come and pull me that way. So my, my core on the left hand side has to stabilize. Okay? So I come down. Anybody that's been following me for any length of time will know how important I believe single leg training is when it comes to getting results. Not just results in terms of leg size and leg strength, but functional leg size and functional leg strength. So we're getting straight down, a little kickstand going on the right side, all the work being done by the left. Straight down, I can maintain good mechanics, okay? Again, I'm not driving the, 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 the car. then explode, straighten out the arms. That's where the triceps get involved. Slowly return, bring it back. Get some power into it. And that's your cable, rotational, push out. Come down here, push up, 
up in one move, punch. Punch. Explosive. Four punches. Come down. 10 pound dumbbells. Come down. Uppercut. The, the thing is that overloaded sports movement can actually mess up technique in the actual exercise. Research have shown this, that if speed of movement decreases by more than 10%, you have a negative learning or performance on the actual speed of movement. So basically, if you do too much overloaded work, well, you're gonna learn to become slower. We're seeing guys doing shadow boxing with 10, 15, 20 pound dumbbells. And it's going like super slow movement. It doesn't have any, any positive impact on your capacity to punch. It only makes you slower. I'm gonna start down here with what I call tapping kettlebell swings. So I can go a little bit heavier weight here, but I wanna demonstrate that basically we're gonna come up and do a swing, but I wanna get fast, quick hands. All right, so basically what you're gonna do is you set yourself up into a swing, get into the routine, get into the pattern, and then the top, tap, tap. At its peak, the kettlebell will reach somewhere around waist or at most chest height. The arms should be treated merely as strings that connect the hips to the kettlebell. They're not involved in pulling it through the legs or artificially pulling it higher than the hip contraction moved it. Would you advise 10 by 10 squats with 70 to 80% one around with one minute of rest for weight loss? No, because you cannot repeat that workout any more than maybe twice or three times a week, probably twice. And thus, when you're trying to lose weight, you should uh, do cardio. There's more sustainable, preferably, that can be done most days. Uh, you know, incline, treadmill, elliptical, jogging, things like that. And people really want to know, what is the best form of creatine to take? So I wanted to cover that, especially considering the fact that in our Athlean RX supplement line, we do not use standard creatine monohydrate, and it's for some very good reasons, I think. So I wanted to at least give you guys those, the, the, the clarity on that. So when, when you mix creatine monohydrate, a lot of times it sinks right to the bottom, and it looks like sand on the bottom. That's sort of a microcosm of what actually winds up happening in a lot of people when they take creatine monohydrate. That same sediment winds up making its way into your intestines and trying to be absorbed, you know, calling in more water to try to help with that absorption, which winds up bloating you and giving you that bloated feeling if you've ever experienced that with regular creatine monohydrate. and trying to be absorbed, you know, calling in more water to try to help with that absorption, which winds up bloating you and giving you that bloated feeling if you've ever experienced that with regular creatine monohydrate. With the creatine hydrochloride, because you're doing that and you're increasing the ability to absorb more of it, you're actually able to take a lower dose, so it has a second benefit to you. You don't have to load with 20 grams anymore, and you don't have to maintain dosages of five grams anymore. You could do it with a lot less. About two grams of a creatine, of a creatine hydrochloride is gonna be equivalent to about four grams of creatine monohydrate. That being said, you do increase the risk of GI side effects with loading creatine and for not much benefit, to be honest. And for not much benefit, to be honest. Nobody ever said that these are going to have, give you more power generating benefits than a regular creatine monohydrate. It's going to give you the same benefits of a creatine monohydrate in terms of performance, but with all those added benefits I just told you about. But with all those added benefits I just told you about. and people really want to know what is the best form of creatine to take. So I wanted to cover that, especially considering the fact that in our Athlean RX supplement line, we do not use standard creatine monohydrate, and it's for some very good reasons, I think. So I wanted to at least give you guys those, the, the, the clarity on that. <laughs>